Hello, and welcome to the Spanish webinar titled Subject Pronouns, Articles, and Gender of Nouns. This webinar will cover both our high school elective Spanish course as well as our career certificate program. If you've not been to a webinar with Penn Foster before, uh, you may see a couple of options on your screen to interact with us throughout the session today. Uh, you can definitely raise your hand to ask any questions you have, or it is probably more important though to ask the questions you have in the box titled questions. Uh, those questions will come directly to us and we will answer them as soon as possible. Bienvenidos a Español, welcome to Spanish. My name is Zach, I'm one of the Spanish instructors here at Penn Foster. Uh, Dan, who is not with us here today, will be your other Spanish instructor. You do have a variety of ways to get in contact with both of us uh, throughout your high school course or your career program. Email and chat options are available through the Help and Support Center of your student portal. You may call us between 9 and 6 Eastern Time, Monday through Friday at 1-888-427-1000. You'll just be asked to enter a menu option, in this case, option number 5 for education, and to enter also your student ID number. Finally, you can text the word LEARN to 39033 for any brief questions that may come up. On today's objectives, we are going to identify subject pronouns, explain article usage, describe the gender of nouns, and finally do a few practice exercises as we're going along. So we'll start with the subject pronouns in the singular and plural. Uh, subject pronouns do exist in Spanish just as they do in English. So if we say I, you, he, she, we, you, and they, uh, these all represent a pronoun. And again, a pronoun is replacing uh, a main noun. So in Spanish, you see the equivalents in this chart. Yo means I. Tu means you in the informal sense. We have usted, uh, which is the you in the formal sense. He for el, she for ella. Going over to the plural, uh, we have nosotros or nosotras, uh, depending on gender. This means we. Vosotros or vosotras means you, uh, again, informal sense. And ustedes means you in the formal sense, in the plural. Eos and eas means they. So you may ask, you know, with looking at this chart, why does Spanish have two different forms of you? Why does it occur both in the second person and third person? You know, this is something unique to Spanish. This is not something English does, right? English just classifies you according to the second person. However, in Spanish, you know, there's a really high regard for people in, you know, a higher power or higher authority than you, right? So if you're talking to a close friend or someone you've known for a very long time, you really are going to use that second person form, the informal. However, if you're talking to, you know, someone that you just met or someone in, you know, a higher role, uh, class, et cetera, than you, you're going to be using that third person form. Another interesting thing about the use is that the second person plural, vosotros form, vosotras, this is really just a form that's used in Spain. You know, a lot of the other forms here are going to be used all around the world, all in these Spanish speaking countries, but the vosotros is pretty, pretty unique to just Spain. So let's try out a couple example sentences using subject pronouns. If we want to say, I am well in Spanish, here we're looking for the I. Our pronoun would be yo. Yo is estoy bien. Next, if we want to say they live in the city, your pronoun would be ellos or ellas viven en la ciudad. And finally, we are students. Our pronoun here would be nosotros or nosotros or nosotras. Now, uh, you may ask another question, why are there two different forms uh, which can mean the same thing, right? So we have nosotros or nosotras. This is really a gender thing. So if you're in a group of just males and you're also a male, you're going to be using this OS form. This represents the masculine. If you're a female and you're in a group of all females, you're going to be using the AS form, us. However, uh, Spanish does an interesting thing as well. When you have a mixed group of individuals, males and females, it always defaults back to this original OS form. So anytime there's a mix, you're gonna go back to the OS. Let's 
just to go over a few more uh, subject pronouns here. We'll try some practice. Uh, number one, Marta y ella. So we have Marta and she. Our pronoun would be ellas. They. And we have two females here, so we're using that AS form. Uh, number two, Marta y Juan. In this case, we have a female and a male. So as I just mentioned, if we have a mixed group of individuals, we're going to use the OS form, so AOS. Number three, Marta y yo. So Marta and I, and the I here is Graciela, who is a female. So we have two females. And our form here would be nosotras, AS, very important here. Number four, usted y yo. Now this yo is a little bit indefinite, right? We don't specifically know if yo, I, would be masculine or feminine. So this one could be either or, nosotros or nosotras. And finally, number five, we'll, we'll stop there. Sancho, Sancho is a masculine name. He, in this case, the pronoun would be L. Okay, the next part of the webinar is about articles and gender of nouns. In Spanish, all nouns are classified according to gender, whether they're masculine or feminine. So general rule of thumb is that many nouns that end with an O are masculine nouns. And many nouns that end in A are feminine nouns. Now, there are definitely exceptions to the rule, uh, but if you see certain nouns in reading, you know, this may help out your, your translations. So, for example, el gato is a masculine noun, the cat, versus la biblioteca is a feminine noun, representing the library. So in addition to the noun having a specific ending, such as an O or an A, it'll also be accompanied by an article, okay, the word before it. And this is often a clue for gender. So just to explain this a little bit more in depth, we have definite articles and we have indefinite articles. So what we mean by the definite article is when we translate a word such as the. So L, would be the masculine singular form of the. The feminine singular would be la. The masculine plural would be los. And the feminine plural would be las. So an example, el libro means the book. Los libros means the books. Again, you know, without even seeing the L, we see in libro, this is ending with an O. Okay, so it's automatically triggering in our mind that it will be a masculine noun. However, as I just said, there also are exceptions. So la mujer means the woman, las mujeres, the women. In this case, you see that mujer does not end with an A. So you can't always go by that ending to tell gender. But if you have an article in front of it that represents a specific gender, this will help you identify the word. So again, this, this chart, these examples, these are all using the definite article, the. However, we also have indefinite articles. So how do we translate these? We say a, an, or some. So in the masculine singular, we have un. The feminine singular, una. Masculine plural, unos. Feminine plural, unas. So using the same examples, un libro means a book, unos libros, some books. Okay, and it's indefinite because we're not referring here to a specific book, it could be any book. Una mujer, a woman, unas mujeres, some women. So we'll do some practice with these, starting with the definite article. And I'll write these on the side here so we remember what those are. So they could be L and LOS in the masculine, or LA and LAS in the plural.
So if we said professor, okay, this is one that, you know, you can kind of think about this O, but this word does not end with an O, so you really don't know right off the bat um, what gender this is. L, professor, masculine, the teacher. When we make it plural, professores, okay, it's still maintaining the masculine nature. So it would be los professores. However, the third one now, you see professora with this A on the end of the word. So what do we have here? Now we have a feminine noun. La professora and las professoras. So in the plural, you can see it's really just the change of one vowel that will change its gender. Professores in number two, professoras in number four. And to end with number five, senor. Senor is a masculine noun, so we would use el. So now going on to the indefinite articles. Just write these off to the side for you. We could either have un, unos, the masculine, or una, and unas in the plural. So number 11, alumno. Now this one really should stand out to you, ending with this O. This would be a masculine singular noun. Un alumno. Number 12, we have alumnos, OS on the end, still masculine. Unos alumnos. Number 13, alumna. Here we have the A on the end of the word. So it moves over to the feminine. Una alumna. And number 14, alumnas, AS on the end, unas, alumnas. And then 15, we have chico, right? So same kind of process as alumno with the O on the end of the word, un, un chico. That does conclude our webinar for today. I hope this information has been beneficial for your studies. Um, a lot of these grammatical webinars that uh, Dan and I both do are pretty short in nature, so we do encourage your uh, attendance and participation in future webinar sessions. Please, uh, please join us to help supplement your studies. If you do have questions, feel free to contact us in one of the options listed below. Uh, we both wish you buena suerte en español, means good luck in Spanish. And have a great day.